ETA is now. We're live. Who can hear me? Make some noise if you can hear me. Huh? Are we good? I'm getting nothing from the chat. It says 22 people on my other computer. Can we go? We make some noise. Can we make some noise? Are we good? Somebody got to say something. It's I'm, I'm seeing 17 people, but no one said anything. So I don't know what to think. Is my chat slacking? We good? Yeah. What's up? Who is on Colorado? Make some noise. What am I talking about? Like, like I, that was a sweat, right? That was a sweat, right? Obviously, Boise is a, a good basketball team to an extent. Okay, like they're in the tournament. They've got some good players. They really defend. They really rebound. They crash the offensive glass. They, they definitely made stuff hard for Colorado to run their offense. But what happened at the end? KJ Simpson made some big plays. A couple big shots from Tristan De Silva. A couple big plays from Eddie Lampkin. They couldn't guard him. Max Rice comes in cold off the bench. Daddy, let me come in so I can shoot. Chucks it from the logo. Brick. Two points, one of eight field goals. Tyson Dagenhart, you are not that guy. You wish you were Tucker DeVries. You wish you were Tucker DeVries. Hell no. Omar Stanley, one for nine. Ogbo balled out. Cam Martin, even though he looks like like a scary motorcycle dude. Credit to him. His footwork's great. He he settled them in, and he, he got them back into that game. Hey, I didn't say it. You did. I didn't say it. You did. All right. The, the Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Here's the chat. What's up? How about those Colorado Buffaloes? That's how we start off the tournament, right? I almost bet UVA yesterday. Thank God I didn't. That's the Ooh. So, there's a lot of things we can do right now. Since since I went on live Sunday, what do you think I've done other than just, like, break this stuff down? You know, my, the way I've looked at some of these matchups has evolved. I'm going to screen share my tournament challenge bracket. I'm going to make a new bracket. I'm going to let you guys bring up games, and, and we're just going to go and, and, and see where the chat takes us, okay? So, give me a second while I share my screen. Also, real quick, if anyone wants to... Join my bracket challenge. Okay, here we go. If anyone wants to join my bracket challenge, um, let's go. What up, Riley? Love to see it. Let's go, Buffs. What up, Sawyer? That's a, that's a cool name, Sawyer Tremaine. Okay, um, real quick. Um, I just sent in the chat the name of my bracket challenge. There's no password. If you Venmo $10 to CT Brackets on Venmo, it's been my Venmo for years. Um, you're in, there's going to be top three, get money. There's already over hundred people. Um, so get in there if you want, let me get my screen shared and in chat, you guys can dictate this. Like someone asked me about a game. Like I can tell you guys some of the games that I've been spending the most time thinking about, but I want to, I want to talk about, uh, what you guys want to hear. Uh, all right. You guys see the bracket now? Yes, right? We see the bracket. I don't know what that means. Is that what's good? What's good, Fancy K? I've never seen a WSG before. Don't make me feel like I, I don't know things. Um. All right, chat. We, we can go a lot of ways with this. Someone someone asked me about a game. Someone asked me about a game. Like I I'll I've got stuff to say all these games. Okay, that's a great one. What up, G Fat? What up, G Wagon? All right. FAU Northwestern it is wait Nick Greeley are you in this chat are you in this chat you better be in this chat um we will get to that right after we will get to that right after okay this is this is the type of chat activity I'm talking for okay FAU Northwestern I've talked with Nick a lot about okay and here's one of the main things I'm thinking about okay Northwestern has done such a good job stepping up after Ty Berry went out right but something that's so key is one what do we think of the Big Ten like like who are the teams that that Northwestern beat when they like responded well to the Ty Berry injury, no one good. And guess what? The only team they played that could actually score the basketball were Wisconsin and Iowa and they lost FAU has been waiting for this moment. Like without Nicholson, Northwestern doesn't have it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Like how are they going to stop flag golden with Luke hunger? Like, like who are these big 10 teams that have a post guy like Vlad golden? There aren't. 
And you look at who Northwestern's beat, and it's like it's just a boo booey. Boo booey is so good. Boo booey is so good, and he's carried this team as far as he possibly can. I'm pretty sure. He, what didn't he just have 30 in the loss to Northwestern? Like 29. Like boo booey is so nice. Okay, it's just not enough. And FAU, the, their their chemistry is undeniable. The way they they come back, they've had so many comebacks this year. Okay, yes, they played onto their competition. Okay, and, and their defensive efficiency is worse than last year, but. They can guard, man. And, like, you know what's another thing is they're well-coached. They don't do stupid things, right? What pissed me off more than anything in Big Ten play, like when I was against Northwestern, is that Boo Booey would bring the ball up the court, and people don't pick him up, and he'll just walk into a three, or they'll go under a screen, and Boo Booey will hit a three in their face. It's like, get on this man. Like, I thought he should have been an All-American. It's like, stop disrespecting him. You should never be letting him get off a screen easily, and you should be picking him up way sooner. He's got range. He doesn't miss. What's 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 his percentage? Boo Booey has been so good. Okay. All this to say, okay, yeah, shooting 44% from deep. He's carried this team. Okay. And all that to say, I, I, I hate going against him because he's a wizard, but Northwestern doesn't have enough juice, man. They're missing two starters. You're playing a team that made the final four last year that has great chemistry, that has a big man in flag gold, and his points prop is at like 16 and a half. Okay. They're not going to be able to stop him. I'm all over FAU. Do I think I haven't placed it yet, but I'm probably going to place FAU minus two and a half. Probably two to three units. So I don't know. Yeah, dude. Like, like I Northwestern is fun and I have enjoyed them because they're very well coached. Like credit to Chris Collins. I thought he was a bad coach. He's a good coach. They, they defend way better than their personnel should allow them to. Cause they're connected. Like guys like Martinelli and Barnheiser, like it's nothing flashy right? They just get in the paint. They can just hit shots from like eight to 10 feet, you know? So that's another thing. Like FAU can get exposed by a team like a Memphis, right? Who's just really athletic and a little bit bigger than their small guards. But Northwestern's just a team that's just trying to go out, execute you. Okay. Like FAU can hold up defensively there. And I'm telling you, Vlad Golden's going to eat. And the way the FAU's whips that ball around the perimeter, like I, I really think I don't see how FAU loses. I'll be shocked if FAU loses. We're taking FAU tomorrow. We're taking FAU. As Nick would say, get ready to learn Vlad Golden, buddy. Um, low key, I I love. I always have a thirteen or fourteen that I love. I always have a thirteen, fourteen that I love, and I don't like any of them this year. Like I don't know if I'm being a hater, but okay, Yale Yale sneaky man. Like Auburn looked like world beaters last week. Like it's there's no way you're taking Yale out, right? But like. Ivy League teams can Ivy League teams can take care of the ball, rebound, and it's just something you haven't been seeing in the SEC. So Yale's funky. I'm not taking them, but one of my hot takes, honestly, is I don't think I think Auburn's gonna lose to San Diego State next round. I think San Diego State's the type of team that can make them not like like Florida kind of plays right into Auburn's hands, right? It's like the second you got into Florida's guards and we're crashing offensive glass and we're feeding broom, it's like it's like they weren't going to be able to stop that. San Diego State can't shoot at all, but they defend. They're going to slow the pace down. They're going to run their same boring sets, and their average shooters are going to get shots. They're going to play through Ladi because he's a beast. And I don't know. I think they can stop room. That that's just something I'm like kind of just low on Auburn compared to consensus. Like I think they're great. It's just I've seen teams in this mold. I've seen Auburn teams like this before. The Auburn team that made the Final Four could really shoot the ball, and and this team has capable guys, but it's just not the same. Um. No Chucky Hepburn, Boo goes off, they lose to Wisconsin. Because Wisconsin just got more cats. Like, it's that simple. Like, Northwestern is just depleted. They're being carried. It, it's what it's like. It's, it's similar to Providence and Devin Carter. That's why I, Devin Carter and Boo Boo deserve, deserve to be first-team All-Americans. They're not first. They deserve to be All-Americans, in my opinion, because they just put on carry jobs, right? And, like, at the end of the day, if you're betting on Northwestern, like, I don't know. You're betting on Boo to go off. You're betting on them to keep Vlad in check. You're betting on FAU to not shoot the three ball well. That's a lot of things. That's a lot of things. Yeah. What's up, Kavanaugh? San Diego's exactly like to beat a team like Auburn, you got to throw them off. Like, that's why I like Mississippi State beat them. That's why App State beat them, right? San Diego State can do that. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a little, uh, let's, let, let's stay with the buffs, right? So, so we love the buffs. We've also loved Florida. If you guys know me, I've been on Florida. I, I think I've hit eight straight, straight bets taking Florida. They didn't cash my SC tournament feature, future. I moved on, whatever. Um, I don't know, man, without Micah, like Colorado, Colorado didn't even play well offensively. Cody Williams was atrocious tonight, right? 
He literally snelled. Um, and you know, when they got the ball to Eddie down low, like they didn't like Hadley and, and Luke O'Brien had no success on post ups, and, and Eddie was great. Eddie was great down low. So against Florida, it's going to be much easier to get into that action uh, of getting their post ups, and they're going to be run- something I said I love about Colorado is they run their offense close to the basket, and, and they play through the paint, great interior passing. That was really hard to do against Boise. Boise defended really well, right? And like that's when even when the bet looked like it was going to hit, I was like, I don't know, I, I shouldn't have taken this bet this heavy because of how Boise defends. So that was an oversight on my hands. But it worked out, okay? I do think Colorado can cause problems for Florida. I love both teams. I'm probably not going to bet it, but low-key, I lean Colorado. There's a reason that as good as Florida is that that line is one. It's a bad match for them, and Colorado is really good. Um, Outside BYU, was the best play of the day tomorrow? Like, the more I think about it, it's FAU. Um, But New Mexico is on Friday. Oh, can we just take a, a quick second? It's Friday. UConn is going to destroy Stetson. Like, this line is not big enough. I already played it. I'll, I'll give you guys a write-up tomorrow. But, like, if you watch, turn on the Stetson, Austin P, A-Sun Championship Extended Highlights. They could not guard a pick and roll for the life of them against Austin P. This dude named Cy Witt is, like, 25. He had, like, 28. Just, like, a 6'8 thick boy. Just was rolling to the basket and getting layups. So they had to throw a zone at them like seven minutes in the game. Like Stetson is horrendous defensively. They had a dude score 43 points to carry them to the championship game. He's nice, but like it's different from you're going from being picked up by Austin P to Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer in your grill. They're going to be down 15 to two. They're going to get smoked. I don't know why the line's so small and, and I might play it bigger. Um, that one doesn't make any sense. They're going to win that game like 115 to like 60. Like I'll be shocked if that's not a blowout. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, about the offensive rebound today from Boise, right? Like they, it's crazy, honestly, that Boise wasn't able to build a lead. It's because they're bad. Um, yeah, well, they were considering the offensive rebounding they had and, and the turnovers. Like, it's crazy that they didn't they didn't turn it into more production. But like, I don't think Colorado is soft on the defensive glass. Like, I think Boise is really good at rebounding, and, and Florida is really good at offensive rebounding. You got you got to take Micah not being there. Like Tyree Samuel's good. Condon and Howard good off the bench, but like. Micah was the best offensive rebounder. Like, your boy just broke his leg. You just got smacked. Like, I don't know where Florida's head's at. Like, and I'm just a little bit lower on Florida because I think Marquette's a perfect matchup for them because Marquette can expose Florida's weaknesses defensively by pushing pace. And on the defensive end, I think Marquette can, Marquette like makes really slows you down defensively. And I think they can do that against Florida, like what Auburn did. So I don't think Florida, I think Florida got a bad draw. I don't think they can make a run. And, and the, the Vlad, the, the Vlad. I was looking at Nick's message because of Northwestern. But, yeah, like, I think Florida got a bad draw. I think Micah uh, is tough. So, okay, Marquette. On the on the topic of Marquette, guys, Kolick's playing. You guys saw what he tweeted today? Someone pull it up. from What, what did Tyler Kolick tweet? He tweeted something basically saying that he's playing. Uh, but, yeah, dude. So, here's the thing with Marquette, guys. Shaka hasn't been great in the tournament. You know, you lost to Michigan State last year, but dude, Cam Jones being arguably your third best player is ridiculous. Oso causes problems. I Ben Gold's getting better and better off the bench. Like Joplin, uh, Mitchell, and Colby, like on the on the wings. Like, I just love their balance. I love their shooting. I love their pace. They're very connected. They defend, they score. Like, I think Marquette could win the title, to be perfectly honest. I think Marquette could win the title. I y- Florida, like I said, I think they match up really well with Florida. Like, low-key, if Colorado beats Florida, like, nah, I think Marquette should be able to beat Colorado. And the thing with Kentucky, right? Like, if Marquette plays Kentucky, if you watch the Kentucky-Gonzaga game, like, Kentucky can't guard a pick and roll. Like, it's crazy to me that Coach Kyle hasn't been able to figure out how to coach these guys, but, like, Kentucky just couldn't guard a pick and roll. And I think Tyler Kolick is... Tyler Kolick also is as hard, if not harder, to deal with than... EK and M hard and, and you've got even better shooters on the side. So and then I'll, and then if you get a Houston team, I think Marquette can be Houston. So I think Marquette can make the final four. And what's crazy is in my first bracket, I had them playing Creighton in the in the semis and then UConn in the championship. And I think with with Kolek back, they could beat UConn in a championship to avoid losing a third time in a row and a third time this season. I think Marquette can win the title, to be perfectly honest. And uh in my bracket pool that I'm running, I send the info and I'm probably gonna have Marquette as my championship pick to get a little unique, right? Like I've got I've got futures in on Purdue, uh, Arizona, Houston, 
UConn from earlier this year. So I've got my investment there and Iowa State, I don't think can win at all. I told you guys how I feel about Auburn. Um, fading Baylor. Langston Love is guaranteed out the first two games of the tournament, which brings us back to our lovely Lobos. Our lovely Lobos who are – my so Terrence Oglesby with the Field 68, he was doing a nice thing today, like tweeting what he thought of like all these matchups, and he tweeted something where he said like, you know, P.J. Hall, blah, blah. Like he, he gave his little preview of the game and then said, the question is, how will Joe Girard and Chase Hunter do against New Mexico's backcourt? And I was like, uh, he's like, can they guard them? And I was like, no. <laughs> like, that's the whole point we're on New Mexico, right? Like, like I just don't think there's any chance they touch them. The only way Clemson wins that game is if, like, the Jack Clarks and the Chauncey Wiggins of the world are hitting threes or, or Hall and Schifflin just dominate on the glass. I'm so confident in New Mexico, and if they beat Clemson, they're going to beat Baylor. I'm I'm very anti Baylor. I'm not anti Baylor enough to get, take a look at Colgate. I don't know if anyone is in the comments. Like, sell me if you are. But uh, yeah. Okay. Um, you're right. FAU's Friday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to to edge you guys to that. Yeah, Florida guards are really nice. But look what happened against Auburn. Like they they weren't able to push the pace and play they wanted to play against against a defense like Auburn. And and it, it was Florida minus one beginning of today. DraftKings had lines up for Florida, Boise, and Florida, Colorado. So already already swinging one and Colorado didn't even play well. So of these, I have a clear answer. I'm going UConn number one, Purdue number two, UNC three, Houston four. And Houston four is because of what happened with Northern Kentucky last year. And uh, low-key, like, I mean, Jawan Roberts is going to play. But, like, if I'm Kelvin Sampson, like, you don't really need him to win this game. Why play him? They always smoke bad teams, but, like, Longwood – Longwood played really well against UNC Asheville in that championship game. Like, I don't know if that's stupid, but Longwood wasn't half bad. Wagner's didn't they win like three straight games in their tournament as under as, as dogs? Like they've been competing. Uh and then in terms of Purdue, like people were going to want to get cute, but like Purdue's gonna smoke them, guys. It's not gonna happen again. The only reason that they were even able to get rattled against Riley Dickinson is because it was close in this, right? Like it's not gonna even be a game in the second half. They'll already have such a huge lead that they, there won't be time for them to get scared. Nebraska a Yoshi. Guys, quick story yesterday. I posted my, I got 3,500 followers. Like, thank you all. And then some idiot unfollowed me. I was at 34.99. And then this guy Yoshi followed me. And I was back at 3,500. So shout out Yoshi for the timely follow. Um, Yeah, Marquette's a great leverage pick because, you know, a lot of people are going to take Kentucky, right? There's going to be a lot of people who take Duke who don't know what they're talking about. And then Houston's the one seed. So I think Marquette is absolutely the, the two seed that, is the best value compared to to the best leverage play. Totally agree. Um, all right. I'm kind of a little all over the place, but but let me keep going. So honestly, I'm just going to do rapid fire. I, at the end of the day, like there's going to be some of these that I get stuck on and, and I go back and forth with the chat, but let me just do rapid fire. Oh, Yoshi, I didn't even answer your fucking question. I'm sorry. But dude, Kansas isn't losing. And there was a clip of a Sanford player today saying like, like we're not going to be surprised. Though. Blah, blah, blah. I know they shoot threes. I get it. I get it. But like, KJ Adams is going to lock the HRH or dude up. Like KJ Adams is a freak. He's so, he's so good. And like people were saying like they thought Hunter Dickinson took a jab at, at Kevin McCullough. Like I disagree. I think Kevin McCullough has just been like literally in the training room trying to get his body fixed like for six hours a day. And finally he's like, fuck it. I'm not doing this anymore. Um, Dickinson's shoulder hurts a little bit, but dude, Sanford's not gonna be able to touch Dickinson. Dickinson's going to go for 28 and 15 and Dewan Harris is going to control the pace of this game. Bill Self will have a good game plan to, to not let Sanford have wide open threes the whole time. Um, I understand you're like, oh, if you're spacing it out, Dickinson can't move. Like, there's plenty of teams in, in the Big 12 that that could space them out a little bit. And I know, like, my BYU Cougars beat them. Not everyone. And I understand Sanford is, in theory, in that same build of a team that's just five out, like, shooting a bunch of threes. But I just don't see it, man. Like, I'm not going to lay the seven, but I'll be very surprised if Kansas loses. And, and at the end of the day, it's gonna, that's the trendy upset, right, of the 13s, 14s. And it makes sense. Like, I understand the logic. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't I just don't see Bill Self losing, losing the first round, to be honest. And they, Sanford could be up at halftime, but I don't think they lose. Yo, that's a bet, Riley. That's one of the greatest bets I've seen. I think Creighton is the biggest lock of non-1s and 2s to make the Sweet 16. Because I think they're going to easily beat South Carolina. I think so someone asked South Carolina, Oregon. I think South Carolina is going to control pace against Oregon, do a good enough job on Dante. And I love Shellstead. He's awesome. But South Carolina just won so many close games this year. 
Um, I don't think that's a fluke. I think they're very well coached. They're old. They share the ball. Um, they share the ball really well. They're like top 20 in assist percentage, I'm pretty sure. And, I mean, there's a reason Oregon was in this situation. Like, they've, they've battled injuries all year, and it's been a young backcourt. And, yeah, Shellstead's hot, but, like, I don't know. I just don't see Dante going off. And and the Tracys of the world, like, the guys on the wings, like, they're fine. They're fine. But there's a reason Oregon was in the position they were. It, credit to them for winning the tournament, and I've loved Oregon over the years. Like, I've loved Dane Alvin over the years, but I'm just not feeling it with this team. Like, that – What's crazy is this Oregon game, right? I keep – I'm on the stream yard instead of – this is what I got to be. This and this are like the two upsets that just like feel right, right? Like it's like, oh, you got a hot Oregon team against an overrated South Carolina team. And you've got a banged-up Kansas team that's been a little – sorry if I'm yelling into my mic. I got to chill. Um, you got a banged-up Kansas team against a Sanford team that shoots a bunch of threes. Like they feel like the right upsets. I get it. I'm just, I'm just personally not feeling them. I'm personally not feeling them. And I'm like very pro-upset. I'm personally just not feeling those two upsets. I might be wrong. I'm just not feeling them. Yeah, Arizona. Arizona is interesting, guys, because we've talked about this. When they're hitting shots and defending, they're who's better? Like literally, who's better than them? Who's better than Arizona at their best? Maybe UConn. Like, like they're so good when they're playing their best. But do I do I trust them to be their best? That's the question. Like, and, and the path is there, right? Could I see them losing to a Nevada? They they will smoke Dayton. Okay, they will smoke Dayton. I think Nevada gives them a game. I'm not going to take it. I think Nevada gives them a game. You know I love my Lobos, and, like, I'm, like, weirdly way too confident that this is going to happen. And, like, I don't mean to be, like, ugh, excuse me. That was gross. I'm sorry. I burped. It's not going to be Baylor. Loki, if I'm wrong about New Mexico, which is obviously going to suck, I'm going to get flamed. There's so many bookmarks on my freaking New Mexico Clemson tweets. Whatever. I'll get off the app and touch grass. Um, but it's not going to be Baylor. It's going to be Clemson, New Mexico. Like, Arizona's got a path, man. And what's so interesting is if we do get the Carolina Caleb Love game, what's he going to do? Is he going to is he going to be even more Caleb Love than usual? Right? Or is he going to be so focused on winning that he'll find this way of being under control and just defending at a level that we've never seen out of him? And uh, I think that's going to be really interesting. I low key for the for the just the the theatrics. Like I would love to see a Caleb Love Arizona Elite Eight matchup. But yeah, man, Arizona is as a two seed from that region. Like it's a they're a good title pick. They're a good title pick. I it's just not for me. And I and I do have a future on them, twenty-two to one, free play. I am the futures guy. Um, but yeah, yeah, this region is ridiculous. And like, yeah, they are the two seed of favorite to win the region. I'm curious if that's because the, this part is re- perceived so poorly, or if it's a vote against Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I also Carolina is the one one seed that wasn't a wagon this year, right? So I think it's a mix of both of those things. But guys, this is a crazy pod. Someone asked about St. Mary's GCU. Nick, are you Shelston? Pritchard, don't forget, Pritchard, it took some time, right? Because he got to play alongside guys. He didn't have to be the point guard, you know? It, he he eased in. Like He was a role player for at least one year, maybe two. And then he carried them to the tournament. And, like, that team, I don't know, that team was just a little bit more fun. Like, maybe like, like maybe Shellstead is Shelstead is really nice. He's really good. I'm not trying to hate, but, uh, yeah, that would be nuts. I bet RJ Davis would play a little bit outside of him. All right. I don't – dude, I don't hate it. Like it's the same knock as last year. Like I had him in my lead eight last year. I had a t- I had a title future on them as well. Um, I had him losing to Bama, but uh, yeah, dude. I you'd like to think that at not you'd like to think you'd expect that at some point the only having four dudes that can score catches up to them, four and a half, right? Like you'd think that catches up to them. What's what's so great about like Fred King probably doesn't play if we get Creighton Purdue, which is going to be nuts if we get it right because it's does. The guy who draws the most fouls in the country banging with the guy who fouls the least in the country. Like, what happens there? Does Cal Brenner stand like this and Edie's rattled? Or does Cal Brenner get knocked back and he's not even doing anything and he's getting called for fouls? So that's a crazy matchup. But, guys, the thing about this, this, this is what's also interesting. Like, TCU could be Purdue. We 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 are acknowledging that, right? Oh, is TCU? No, TCU is Friday. I'm playing TCU, by the way. Uh if TCU beats Purdue and like, you know, some crazy stuff happens with McNeese or Gonzaga, like you don't know who this team's going to be that Creighton or Tennessee is going to play. This is like my most confidence VC team. How is it not going to be Creighton, Tennessee guys? 
Nick was trying to sell me on Colorado State against Texas, and he made some good points. Um, I don't think either of them can beat Tennessee, though, and I, and I and I definitely lean Creighton towards Tennessee. But in terms of Creighton as a title pick, like you can do worse. You know what you're going to get with them, but I just don't know if the juice is there. You'd like to have a little bit more depth to just be a, a title team. Yeah, Riley, that's a great bet, man. Like I'm telling you, Langston Love is the dude I trust the most on Baylor. He's the dude I trust the most on Baylor. I don't think uh, Colgate is going to be able to guard them. I think that could get bad, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I'm fading Baylor. I'm fading Baylor. Um, What's my number one bet tomorrow? I keep forgetting what games are today and tomorrow, guys. I've been so all over the place. My number one bet tomorrow is, so I got the BYU at the 7.5. It could be that UConn's Friday. Are all my bets Friday? Oh, Drake. <sighs> Drake. I got Drake at plus money. They're, do- they're favorites now, right? I love Drake, man. I love Drake. I made a video on the Sleepers YouTube channel uh, talking about Drake. Here's, here's what Wazoo is, guys. Wazoo is a less dusty Boise State, right? Like, you don't have the dude with the hair, and you don't have Tattoo Man coming in. And you don't have Max Rice coming in, right? Like, Wazoo's just a solid team that wants to play inside out, win on the glass, control pace, defend, rebound. And then they got a couple dudes. Jalen Wells is really good. He could be a pro. And 23, the other shooter. And then you've got a guard in Miles Rice. I tweeted this out today. He's missed his last 22 threes. Like, he's ice cold right now. And he's the dude who can really only create off the bounce. Like, that's not Wells in uh, 23 or more shooters. So, like, I just don't think Washington State's all that. Like, they're, they're solid. Um Drake, man, like I went back and watched Drake Miami last night. Drake should have won that game. Drake was up eight with four minutes left, guys. And Tucker DeVries shot one of 13. Drake easily could have been Miami. And uh, Miami forced a couple turnovers, got a couple of nice foul calls. Nigel Pack hit a couple shots, and boom, Miami won. Like, like they, they, they blew it last year. And they're back focused, man. They've had plenty of times since the Missouri Valley tournament. Tucker's thought about that game every single day. Like, he's going to hoop, man. Tucker DeVries is going to hoop. I've been talking to Nick about it for a while. And like um, Darnell Brody, it's not a game where he's going to get exposed. Uh, I think Darnell Brody has the advantage down low. Washington State has depth in the front court, but like dude named Oscar Clough, like seven footer from Australia. He's not even seven feet, just from Australia, like scruffy beard. Big boy Brody's going to knock him around, guys. And, and Drake's got just more speed on the perimeter. Like, like, they just got speed on the perimeter. They're connected. They can shoot. All those other off guys can create. It's not just Tucker DeVries, right? It's like Enright, right, Overton, and then who's got the bench is at Garland. Just good. They're good players. They're well coached. They've been in this moment before. Washington State is not. Kyle Smith's never coached in the tournament before. And DeVries has. This is his third time. They haven't gotten that win yet. Or, no, they won a first four game three years ago, right? They won the first four game over, like, Wichita or someone uh, before losing to USC. But... Drake is the more comfortable team here. Like, they've been in this moment before. They've got the best player on the floor. They've got the best big man down low. Give me the Drake Bulldogs. Like, let's have some fun. Like, I'm not I'm not loving the Cinderella's this year, like, unfortunately. It would just sucks, dude. It sucks that the committee is just such dickheads that they put Grand Canyon and McNeese against St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Like, you put the two, like, every year tournament teams who aren't in the Power Six against the two most exciting mid-majors. Like, it's such bullshit. It's such bullshit, and I'm pissed about it. Because at first, I was like, McNeese and Grand Canyon got screwed. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe Gonzaga and St. Mary's got screwed. And then I flipped back and forth, and I ultimately decided they all got screwed. It's stupid they're playing each other. Like, Gonzaga didn't need to be a five. St. Mary's didn't need to be a five. The resumes weren't that good. Like, it seems like they purposely did this so that they all can't make runs if they're playing each other. That's truly how I feel. Because guess what? If it's a year where Grand Canyon, St. Mary's, Gonzaga, and McNeese all make the Sweet 16, it's a lot harder to argue for, oh, yeah, we really needed to get free in Utah and I didn't mean to take a shot at Utah. I like Utah. We really needed to get all these football schools in, right? Like South Carolina, Oregon, they easily could they easily could have put McNeese there and Oregon there. Like, I don't know. I think it's bullshit. And uh those matchups have given me a lot of problems. Like I've really thought them through. I've been like, okay, Grand Canyon can like look, St. Mary's plays six dudes. They can't shoot free throws. They can't shoot they can't shoot threes. Um I'm not sold on Aiden Mahaney. He's good. Marshall Onus being the player of the year. Like Marshall Onus I'm not trying to be a hater. I used to really like him. Um, he's a really good passer. Okay, St. Mary's is so well coached. They control the glass, offensive and defensive. Um, 
it's like can Grand, Grand Canyon gets to the line, top five in the nation. So it's like, can Grand Canyon just be athletic, right? And just like, and they got a four man that can shoot it. They got some good guards. Like they were in the tournament last year, played Gonzaga, ironically. Like it's like, can they just out athletic St. Mary's? Like a, a St. Mary's team that's not that good that's just playing to their ceiling because they're so well coached. Can they do that? Yeah, I think they can. But like, it's like, am I betting against St. Mary's in the tournament in the first round? Like they could dominate the glass. They could dominate the glass. And like, as much as I like Tom Grant Foster, he's a little spastic. Like he's so athletic and he's he's really good. And there's other guys. It's not like just him. That's just one I've been back and forth on, guys. Like I really want to take Grand Canyon, but it's just tough. And then McNeese, if you guys saw the, the Shahada Wells thing I posted. So Shahada Wells, obviously on TCU last year. Had some big games and then just stopped playing towards the end of the year. Like he just wasn't he wasn't getting minutes. And and in the press conference from uh, for McNeese that they got in the tournament, someone asked, like, oh, like, you know, didn't you lose to Gonzaga in the tournament last year? He's like, Yeah, like it'll be good to like get that revenge. And then Will Wade goes, Oh, like, how'd you play? And I don't know if he was trolling or if he actually knew. And he goes, ah, I didn't really I didn't really play. And then Will Wade goes, So Jamie Dixon's fault. Like, that's just the the epitome of like. Shahada Wills had to sit there, guys, and just watch the tournament last year. He played five minutes. He scored zero points. He took one shot. They lost. And now it's your turn. Like, same thing as Tucker Reed. Like, guys, I buy into the emotional narratives. I, what, what, I bought into the Eddie Lampkin narrative, right? This dude hooped in the tournament two years ago. You know, stuff happens with TCU. He doesn't play last year. He's back this year. You see how fired up that man was? You see, he brought his A game. It's like, that's a dude I want to bet on. Shahada Wells is a dude I want to bet on, guys. He's a bucket. He, he plays the best when the lights shine brightest. He's really good. And Gonzaga's solid defensively, but Shahada Wells is the best guard on the floor. Like, I, he's not a pure point guard like Ryan Neymar, but, like, he's a bucket. He is so graceful. Like, into the hoop. Like, his pull-up threes, like, he's a bucket. Shahada Wells. It's like, he's a, he's a guy I trust. Hey, Will Wade, American gangster. Absolutely. Like, that's the other thing, guys. Mark Few never, Mark Few never loses before the Sweet 16, right? They always make the Sweet 16. It's like, how can I go against him? You're not going to beat him. Like some cute mid-major, like a Grand Canyon last year, right? Which, uh, that wasn't disrespectful. They weren't the team they are now. They aren't as good as they are. They were like the five in the whack last year, guys. Um, Will Wade's the best coach Mark Fuse had to see in the first round. Like that I can ever remember, right? Like Will Wade is legit. Like you watch, if you go to his Wikipedia and see how you see his rise in the ranks, Will Wade is legit, okay? And those LSU teams he had were fun. Um this McNeese team turns you over. They shoot threes. They've got a star. They've got the athletes. Uh, you guys want to hear my favorite McNeese stat? You guys want to hear my favorite McNeese stat? Guess how many threes they allow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm asking a question. Like, yo, you can answer. I'm not okay. McNeese allows teams to shoot 48% of their field goal attempts from distance. That's the most in the country. Why is that? They're super aggressive. They force the seventh most turnovers in the country. They're going to double the shit out of EK, right? EK is really good. They cannot touch EK one on one. A lot of teams can't. They're going to double EK. They're going to try and blow up Ryan Nemhard on, on ball screens, and they're going to try and force turnovers. Gonzaga takes care of the ball. They're smart. So it's like, am I betting on McNeese to get these turnovers, or am I betting Gonzaga to handle that pressure? Excuse me. And I watched Gonzaga, watched some more Gonzaga, caught up on some Gonzaga tape. Like, guys, they've gotten so much better since earlier in the year. And the key is Ben Gregg's in the lineup instead of Dusty Stromer. I don't know what's wrong. They put Ben Gregg in the lineup over Dusty Stromer. So when Nemhard comes around the screen, right, he is so – I don't know what their dad fed them as kids, but those kids got some vision and some basketball IQ, the Nemhards, right? He comes off that screen, and it's – he's just he's just in such control of the basketball, and he's moving the defense with the eyes either, boom, it's into EK. I'm going myself. Or Watson, Greg, and Hickman are in such good sync because this team is so well coached. They're just relocating along the perimeter, boom, pass there, and, and you're attacking closeouts, so you got an open three. So I really do think McNeese could struggle to just guard them hard decision-making out of the pick and roll. That's what scares me. I really want to take McNeese, guys. I believe in Willie the Kid. I, Dude, Bobby, I agree with you. I just hate that they have to play Gonzaga. It's like, why are they playing Gonzaga? Sucks that they're playing in Zaga. EK in 18 wins over 18 points a game and like seven loss under 12 points a game. And what's a big reason why, Nick? It's because foul trouble. EK hacks. Like to be like a 16 and nine or whatever he is, big man, X Mountain West player of the year, first team all WCC, to be that good of a big guy 
in a game they won by 30 against like Pacific or Portland or one of these shit WCC teams, he fouled out. No, he had four fouls in 13 minutes, or he fouled out in 13 minutes, something ridiculous like that. It's like, bro, hacks. And this game completely flips on its head if EK is not out there, right? Because then McNeese can play normal defense. They don't have to crazy double, triple Graham EK and then allow Watson, Hickman, Greg to play. Me. And here's the thing. I used to be like a Nolan Hickman kind of hater. Like, obviously, at Hunter Salas now, I'm a fan of because of Wake. But, like, even last year, I'm like, why isn't Hunter Salas in the chat a new guy, Malachi? I forget his last name. Why isn't Malachi and Hunter Salas in instead of Nolan Hickman and Rashir Bolton? I'm like, they're better. Um, point is... Now, like, they're playing three bigs, Gonzaga, right? And Watson and Greg are versatile. They can move. They can shoot it. They can play make. I don't know Greg can play make, but Watson can play make. Hickman can play make. Hickman has gotten a lot better. What's it? What's it? Oh, Sorry. Can you guys hear me? Did I mess it up? Um, stop moving. Um, Hickman this year is shooting 41% from deep. Way better than last year. What was he shooting last year? Uh, 35. But... A lot of that was against easier teams. That's a big that's a big jump for a guy like him. So it's hard for me to place this one, guys. I think it's the best game of the weekend. And uh, I really want to take McNeese. I just can't get there. Maybe I'll have a last second change of heart. I just can't get there. Um, the, the, like, here's the thing. If they dare Gonzaga to beat them by Nolan Hickman, Anton Watson, and Ben Gregg shooting threes, like, that could work. EK could get in foul trouble. And I keep starting to think on this path and I get, try to get myself to McNeese. Like, McNeese is going to score. McNeese is going to score. I just don't know if they're going to be able to force turnovers. And I don't know if they're prepared to just be able to handle Gonzaga. Gonzaga is just so well coached, man. Mark, there's a reason that he does it. Like, I just think he'll have the count. But Will Wade's such a good coach. You guys see what I'm talking about? It's so back and forth. I can't get there. Um, I want to play McNeese, but I can't do it. Um, but the winner of that game, guys, is going to beat Kansas, I think. And, and I don't think it's going to be Sanford. So watch out. Because all of a sudden, if TCU beats Purdue and Gonzaga gets by McNeese, all of a sudden there's a path, guys, for Gonzaga to make a Final Four. So it's crazy up over there. Okay, that's a that's a great point, Bobby. So, right, like the, here's the thing. Who, who did St. Mary's lose to um, early on in the year when they were stanking it up? They lost to... Weber State, who had a really good player, and who was a really good player in Dylan Jones, they lost 61 57. Dylan Jones at 29. Okay. You lose to San Diego State by 25. You lost to Xavier by 17. The Xavier team that I like, right? Xavier's got good, good guards. They got guards with size that can get to the basket. You lost to Utah. Utah's a good offensive team that when Utah was healthy, like that was before they had Davon Smith playing, but it was when they had Raleigh still playing. They lose, at, they lose to Utah at home. You lose to a Boise team that y'all know how I feel about. And then you lost to Missouri State at home. So, like, guys, St. Mary's was 8-6 and six at Christmas. And now, what have they done since? Only won 18 of 19 games, their one loss being to Gonzaga. So, like, the the way they rebound, um, Mahaney and Marshallonis' control of pace, Dukas is really solid. They just don't have the upside uh, of years past. They just don't have the upside of years past. And, like, Jefferson's out of the lineup. They play six dudes. They don't shoot free throws well. They're they're they shoot six, they shoot their bottom forty in the country in free throw percentage. So it's it's just they're just not sexy at all. They're not sexy. But as Bobby points out, like Tyon Grant Foster could get bottled up, and, and Grand Canyon's just not running anything. They're losing on the glass, and all of a sudden St. Mary's pulls away. They win this game sixty-two to fifty. Like that's probably what's going to happen. That's why I can't get there with Grand Canyon. But Grand Canyon's really good, so it wouldn't surprise me if they were able to out. To use their athleticism, St. Mary sh shoots like trash in the perimeter. Saxon and uh, what's the other guy who can't shoot free throws? Um, Barrett. Barrett's literally shooting. Um, no, it's not Barrett. It's Forbes. Forbes is shooting. Mason Forbes is shooting a 13, 31% from the free throw line. He's the guy that has had to play more. The, the Harvard transfer. He's had to play more since the injuries. And uh, he's athletic and he can't. He's 31%. So him and Saxon are trash in the free throw line. There's ways Grand Canyon gets home, guys. There's ways McNeese gets home, and I really want to take them. I'm just not there. I've, I'm spending too much time on this. We can we can move on. Um, I'm not talking about Kyle Neptune right now. Obviously, he's a bad coach. He's obviously a bad coach. It was just a whole absolute nightmare from Villanova that they they brought in these talent. They they bought Lance Ware, Ware a Lamborghini and they paid Tyler Burton 600k to try to make him do everything that he's not good at. Um, that's another that's another conversation. 
Okay, Michigan State, Mississippi State's tough. I'm not betting this game. I'm not betting this game because a lot of people I respect, including Nick, um, I'm pretty sure are pretty high in Michigan State. I just can't get there. I'm anti-Michigan State. But could I see them locking up Josh Hubbard and all of a sudden Mississippi State can't run any offense? Absolutely. Mississippi State's beating good teams. This game's a pick em ish for a reason. I think it might be signed to its party, but uh, yeah, yeah. No more Villanova stuff. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I can't get there on Sparty. A lot of people are that I respect. Uh, I lean Mississippi State. I'll probably have my bracket, but um, it's tough. I might just start to do some bracket stuff, kind of just reflecting what I'm talking about. So, Bama, guys, I think Bama's going to run laps around Charleston. Um, I was talking to Nick about this, too. Like, Bama's been horrible shooting the three ball lately. They still score 85 points in the game. And... I think stepping outside the SEC, like they're going to be licking their lips. They're going to be able to get whatever shots they want. Like Grant Nelson's a, a tough, a really tough matchup for them. Like Sears is so quick. Estrada cooked them when he was in in this league uh, playing for Hofstra. I think Bama's going to win like 105 to 80. Like I don't think Charles, everyone's like, ooh, this is going to be such an exciting ups and down game. Like maybe I'm wrong. I don't feel it. I'm not trying to be an upset hater too. Like I feel like I'm just being so anti-upset and I hate it, but. It's tough. If I had to pick one of these teams, I'm definitely picking McNeese. Um, what did I miss here? Okay. I don't think South Carolina has any chance against Creighton, to be honest. Um, I just think Creighton is going to be able to run them off the, the three-point line and make Michi and, and the guards have to have to make plays out of the pick and roll more than the way South Carolina kind of wants to zoom it around. And uh, eh, actually... Mac and Murray Boyles are kind of matchup issues, right? Like, I love Shireman. He's able to to guard so many different positions. That's kind of funky, though, right? Because those guys are small and solid and, like, could maybe be weirdly successful against Cal Brenner. Like, it reminds me of Foosh Traore on BYU. Like, some of these smaller – like, Foosh Traore was getting shots up over Dickinson, which was crazy to me. I'm like, how does that make any sense? So there could be something funky there with BJ Mac and – uh and Murray Boyle's being matched balance for Creighton, but I just think Creighton's at a whole nother level. Um, like, I, I give South Carolina enough credit of, like, great season. I think you're better than Oregon. I'll give you a game. I'll be pretty surprised if they beat Creighton, but like I said, there there are some interesting matchup, matchup things there. Um, yo, so Riley, that's the thing about St. Mary's Bama. Like, what a game that would be, right? You would have... Ultra slow, ultra disciplined versus Lucy Goosey three point shooting offensive barrage. It's hard to think that St. Mary's could like legit bog Bama down. And Bama's lapses defensively, right? Like in the way that teams are able to just pour on points against them, St. Mary's just like doesn't have the horses to like expose that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not like St. Mary's is going to score 90 points in this game. It doesn't matter what Bama does. That's just not happening. Um, it's like if you put Virginia against Alabama, it's the same thing. Um, that's a really interesting matchup. Like, low-key, if Bama gets their footing under them, I might think that they could they could get it together and beat St. Mary's. But there's also a chance that St. Mary's just dominates the glass and does something to Bama we haven't seen before. From what I've seen, I, I haven't gotten any good news about Warren Washington or Darian Williams, Darian Williams, and NC State's red hot, and who's guarding DJ Burns? So like, if they're not, if, if Tech's not healthy, I don't know how you're taking – NC State with any confidence. With that being said, if Texas Tech is healthy and wins this game, I think they could give Kentucky a game. Kind of vibes based, but Texas Tech's guards, I don't believe in that much. Isaac's Toussaint, but Kentucky can't guard anyone. And they could get by guys and find shooters and find chance and, and Williams and Walton. It could totally happen. Um Kentucky's Kentucky's hard to judge. Obviously, we know how good they can be, but for me, I can't get there as them as a Final Four team because I feel like if they could play defense, they would have done it by now. It doesn't make any sense to me considering how Cal has coached his teams in the past that he hasn't been able to get this team to play defense. It does, And, I, and apparently, I looked at the numbers. Reeves and Wagner are the worst two defenders. It's not like it's like Shepard and Dillingham. Shepard's good at defense. And, and Dillingham's not as bad as Reeves and, and Wagner. It just it bogs my mind when he has this much versatility, you know, Tierra and Edwards, like big, strong dudes. You saw them go to Auburn and hold them to 59. Like you saw them defend everyone except for Dalton Connect against Tennessee. Like we've seen tiny flashes, but like, do they throw it all together? Like, I just think Marquette's going to beat them if Marquette's there. So that, that's my issue with Kentucky. And then with, with state tech, like if you're getting plus money at state, if you're catching four and a half and they're not healthy, like if Texas Tech's not healthy, like 
State's obviously the side there for me. I don't know if I'm going to play it. Um, yeah, so um, ones and twos. I'm usually proud of myself on being able to get the 8-9 that's going to win. Um, last year at Arkansas over Kansas, that one felt good. Um, here, here are my top four that I think it happened. Honestly, I'm just going to give you two. I think FAU could beat UConn. FAU could beat UConn because Golden's a good body for Klingon. The chemistry on the, 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 the way they play up to their competition, the way they've played on neutral courts this year and last year, um, the way they pass the ball, the tough shot making ability of John L, the, the fact that they can get threes, the fact that they can run, like, and that their defense gets better and their defense can elevate, even though the metrics don't say they're that good defensively. Like, I just have a trust in FAU. I believe in FAU magic, and I think uh, they can definitely give you kind of scare. I'm not going to, I would look to take FAU if they're getting, I told myself I was not, after St. John's pulled off the cover, Backdoor against UConn, I'm like, I'm not taking a spread against UConn in the tournament, but I definitely might with FAU. I, I, that crazy things have happened. Crazy things have happened, right? We see these ones, go down. And the number two is TCU against Purdue. So TCU, uh, one of my favorite stats is there. I don't know. This isn't one of my favorite stats. I don't know why that was my lead in. It's, I learned this stat today is a better lead in. Um, TCU is top 20 defensively since February 1st. That was my issue with this TCU team. It's like you don't have the same guard star power as you did before, and you don't defend as well as you did before. The defense has gotten better. Ernest Uday is healthy now, right? He's a body to throw at Edie. Um, they've got two other big guys in Cork and the guy who doesn't play as much. Um, I forget his name. Point is, you're still going nine deep. You've got five guys back from that team that should have beat Arizona in the tournament two years ago. Like you've got consistency. I was listening to Jamie Dix's press conference. Like, like this is a it's a really good group. They've they've got good chemistry. They're getting better, and they cause problems in a one game setting because of their depth. Um, because they can hit a bunch of threes. They're defending better. They number one team in transition. Like, per, TCU is the type of team like a Big Twelve team that sure they went 500 in Big Twelve play. They look like crap half the time, but like they're the exact type of team that could go beat Purdue. Right, that gets Purdue out of their flow, that pressures the guards, that hits some threes, that gets out in transition, that has bodies to throw at ED. I love Micah Peavy. I don't think anyone off Purdue can guard him off the bounce. Um, TCU is the other eight nine that I would look to bet. In terms of the two seeds, um, Nevada is interesting. I can't really get behind it. I, I don't know the team well enough. Call me crazy if the Drake Bull, the, the Drake Bull. Ugh, I don't know, guys, if Drake could actually beat Iowa State. If they ball out in round one, like it's going to be hard to talk me off it. I'm going to say Drake is one of my top three two seeds to go down. I Like I said, I think Marquette matches up really well with Florida. Could Colorado get hot maybe? And then Texas, guys, Texas is a weird one because whenever I want to get high on um, Texas, they do some stupid shit. And then I'm like, you know what? Tyrese Hunter is actually not that good. So CSU could totally win this game. I, I don't think Tennessee loses before Creighton. I think that's the earliest they lose. So this year, it feels weird, right? Because parity seems to be as high as ever in college basketball. But usually I'm like a very big 13. Or, I always have one or two 13s and 14s. I always have one or two ones and twos going down before the, the Sweet 16. But like to me, this is just my angle, right? Hear me out. So let's say I think TCU can beat Purdue, Okay. And I think FAU can beat UConn. Let's say I'm right and FAU beats UConn, and but but Purdue makes the final four. It's like you don't get I don't get any more bonus points for picking this as I do with getting Marquette to the Sweet 16, right? It's like it's like you gotta you gotta think about the game theory stuff for your bracket pool. It's like it's all fun and all to be like, yo, I sniped TC over Purdue, but like I'm in the betting game, man. Like if I think TCU can beat Purdue. Like, I'm going to bet them to beat Purdue or I'm going to bet them to cover against Purdue outside of my bracket. And, like, at the end of the day, if you send all your ones to the Sweet 16, like, and one of them loses, it's like, it doesn't matter whether you snipe that team. What's more important is that you didn't try to get another one and miss that one because then you missed two of the four. You know what I'm saying? If I have UConn, Houston, Purdue, and North Carolina, if one of them loses, it doesn't matter because I still got three, if that makes any sense. What, what matters is your teams that you have going really far – not losing early. And uh yeah, like as Nick says, like the parody's gonna come after round one. That's when the crazy stuff's gonna happen. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know. But yeah, to answer your question, I would say Drake, uh, Nevada, and Texas. But I don't even know if I mean Texas. Okay. So, hey, man, I love it. I love Drake. I'm the biggest Drake guy, as you'll, you'll see. But it's a lot easier to not turn the ball over in the, in the Missouri Valley than it is when you've got Iowa State hounding you. Like, Iowa State is so elite defensively. I don't think they're going to make a Final Four. I think BYU or Illinois is going to beat Iowa State, to be honest. Um, I think a really good offensive team like one of those two, BYU's obviously had success against them this year, and I think Illinois can have success against them. Um, and do I think Illinois could beat Iowa State? I think BYU has a better chance to beat Iowa State than Illinois because of the familiarity. And I don't know. I don't want to – you know what? I'm going to put a pause, guys. On the hypothetical matchups, I'm going to bring it back to to just talking about round one. I want to stay focused. Yeah, I've got I put BYU in my main bracket elite eight. You know I love them. Good leverage. They're they're better than the six. They can beat an Illinois team that doesn't play defense, and they can beat an Iowa State team they've already played. I totally agree with you. They sure did, Twins fan. What up, my guy? Um, crushed them at home, eighty-seven seventy-two, and should have beat them at Iowa State. Iowa State went on a huge run. Hilton Magic. You know what it is. All right. See you, bro. I thought that was a. Te- I thought that said Texas A&M. That I'm snoozing on Texas A&M. Maybe, maybe, and I know you didn't mean that, but maybe that was a sign. Yes, go Buffs. What a hit! Make some noise in the chat if you hit that. What a way to start the tournament. A little four unit winner. A little bit of a sweat. My the guy that I absolutely roasted in my write up goes one for eight. Comes in off the bench, ice cold and missed a three. That was beautiful. Make some noise if you took Colorado. Make some noise. I've got 48 people in this live stream right now. That's pretty awesome. What up, Ben? What up, man? I appreciate you guys. It's late night. I'm in the I'm on I'm in Central Time, so it's not even midnight for me yet. But I assume most of you, a lot of you guys are East Coast. Like this is absolutely awesome to be ripping the stream. I want to stop ranting about hypothetical matchups and let's bring it back to to tomorrow and Friday. Um, what's up, my man? Uh, I definitely lean Duke. Uh, I think they get back on track after what happened in the ACC tournament. I don't think Duke has a chance to advance past the Sweet 16 to be honest, unless Houston loses. Uh, but Vermont's not that good. Like the last time Vermont was a 13 seed, they were a much better team. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. From what I've seen of them, I'm just not very impressed at all. I, I think they're a pretty weak 13. I think the 13s in general. Guys, think about it like this. That Princeton team was a 15 last year. They were damn good. Yale's a 13 this year, and they weren't even the best team in the league. The The, 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 the lower seed teams aren't as good this year, guys. Someone's going to win. Some random shit's going to happen. I just don't want to act like I I know I can see the future. It could be Oakland beats Kentucky. I doubt it's Akron beating Creighton. I doubt it's St. Peter's beating Tennessee. Long Beach State over Arizona. You never know. I don't think it's going to be this. I don't think it's going to be this. I don't think it's going to be this. But I'm anti-Baylor. I still think they beat Colgate. Could it, could a Moorhead State team beat Illinois that doesn't score? Probably that doesn't defend, I meant to say. They could. Yale-Auburn. It could be Yale-Auburn. Low-key. Hey man, we've seen if if you can throw Auburn off, it can get it can look bad. If you can make Auburn play a half court game and you can stop Broom, it can look bad. That's why I think San Diego State's going to beat them. There I am again, looking into the future. Huh. Um. So no, I don't think Vermont's getting any shot versus Duke. Let me see what else I missed in the chat. Um. Yeah. Back to my guy Bobby. Um. Sucks, guys. I got. We can talk JMU for a second. I think I might. Have to, I think I'm deciding if I'm going to bet JMU. Um, there's a lot to like about James Madison. Wisconsin is not super scary. The thing about Wisconsin is like your bigs that you play through, right? Crowell and Wall. Who like Wall's not as important as he was last year because of you know they they got got more guys this year and they've got better offensive players. But JMU's bigs can totally hold up against those guys. Like they're not imposing. And Stephen Crowell leads his team in turnovers. Like he can be weak with the ball and like he can shoot it from three, but uh, Bickerstaff and who's the other guy? Uh, Wooden, Julian Wooden. Those guys can totally stay mobile out on the perimeter. Um, we saw that cold streak that Wisconsin went on, right? Like, like they lost how many? Wisconsin lost four in a row, like lost four of their last six going to the Big Ten tournament. Like, yeah, they beat a Maryland team that was bad all year. You beat a Northwestern team that's thin. And you found a way to get it done over Purdue, a team that you had seen multiple times before, like, right, that you had, that beat you the first two times. It's the Big Ten. You step outside your league. It's like, how good really is this team? Wisconsin, you know, you beat Marquette at home, like, back early in the year. It's like, 
I'm not that impressed with Wisconsin. They're not as good defensively as they used to be. It's an offensive minded team. They rebound defensively, but um, they don't take as good care of the ball. Like they've been taking better care and they've been defending better. But like, I think Wisconsin is just a team that I am way more comfortable going against than Gonzaga and St. Mary's. And even though I think McNeese and Grand Canyon are better, like James Madison's really good. Like they haven't beaten anyone's like impressive since other than Michigan State, but like the numbers check out. The personnel's legit. Second in the country three point uh, defense. Like um, there's just no real weaknesses. Like they're just a really solid team. They've been playing well together. They're in rhythm. They're confident. And Wisconsin's not a scary opponent. What was it? Wisconsin lose it? Was it? Uh, Wisconsin lost to Oregon, the Peyton Pritchard Oregon team. I remember they got upset. That was that was Greg Gard. They were in the exact same spot of the bracket as well. I don't know. I think James Madison's my favorite twelve upset. Even though I wish it was McNeese, it's not. Um. Dayton, Nevada. What's up, Jacob? You're a good follower. I appreciate you. Appreciate your support. Um, and everyone, by the way, if you're here, 51 people is absolutely nuts. I can't believe it. Can you please like this and subscribe to the channel? It'd mean a lot. I've been giving you guys winners. I've been like on an unreal hot streak. Like I keep thinking it's going to end and it hasn't yet. Like why not just ride it out the rest of the season, but I appreciate all you guys. Uh, seriously, this, this has been an awesome run and I've, I've really enjoyed it. And, and the support is awesome. Um, Dayton, Nevada is like the most boring first round game, to be honest. It's like the one game I haven't really gone into and like looked in deep, but like Nevada was a team that I was like anti and like, don't even, I don't want them in the tournament. I watched them more. I faded them against Colorado state. It was the game. Lucas hit that full court shot without Blackshear and I, and I watched them play and I knew Blackshear was good, but seeing what they did without Blackshear, I was like impressed with them. They can cause some mismatches. Um, they defend well and, um, Dayton, like, I don't know if this is a little bit of bias. Like, you guys remember Nate Santos went off in the in, in the preseason tour in the I don't know if it was Charleston Classic. Wake was in it, Houston was in it, St. John's was in it, Utah was in it. But Nate Santos on Dayton's going off. And he was a dude that like barely played on pit. Like, like Kobe Bray can really shoot it. I just don't think Dayton has like the the guards supplemental to to Deron Holmes. Like, I understand they can shoot the three really well, but it's like they shoot the threes well. Deron Holmes is nice. But Nevada is just like a better cohesive team, and there's a reason they're favored as a 10 seed. I lean Nevada. I lean Nevada. Um, but when you got the best player on the floor, you, you know, maybe you give him a game. <laughs> What's up, Dodd? <laughs> How's it going? Hey, some will get it. Some will get it. I can't believe you're in this, Dodd. Dodd, who's your Dodd? Who's your championship pick? You're always into the game theory. You're always looking for the the contrarian one seed. Um. I already talked about this, Cade. I've got um, I've got South Carolina. I'm a little nervous about it. Like I placed this right when the bracket came out because I was like just kind of low on Oregon. I thought it was a good matchup because I think South Carolina can control pace, and I like the way. Of course, it's Arizona. That doesn't surprise me at all. They're the two seed. We were talking about this earlier. It's the exactly. It's the it's the two seed with the best chance to make the final four, least like least uh, likely of other people to have them. They're extremely talented. They could totally do it. If Caleb Love doesn't do stupid stuff. So I respect the pick, Dodd, and I'll cash my future with you if you're right. Um, yeah, Nevada's been playing really good. Not Alex is dashed to financial freedom. What a great name. Um, and hell yeah. How about those Bulldogs? Um, they're fun. They're fun. And guys, if you go watch the Drake Miami highlights last year, like you'll know that Drake was a better team than Miami. They made the Final Four, and they let that one slip. They're going to come correct. They're going to come correct. Yeah, Nevada's been playing really well. Um, scares you, as in scares you that you don't trust them or scares you that they could beat Nevada? I need you to clarify that. Um, okay, good question, Kate. How important do you think depth is in the tournament? It's overrated to an extent, okay? Because a team like Kansas, although I would like to have Kevin McCuller, or a team like Creighton, who really relies on their core, can still make a run. Because you can play guys heavy minutes, Okay. Like, there are situations where you're watching a March Madness game and a big guy gets in foul trouble and you're like, who is this dude they're bringing in that is booty cheeks, right? And you're like, I wish I, I wish I knew who the backup big was before I bet on this team. Or, like, you look at a team that is particularly deep, like a Bama, like a Kentucky, um, like a TCU, um, even Oregon and South Carolina, they're pretty deep teams, like, unless depth is like a particular strength of your team, like you remember the Florida state teams that would go on a run. It's like just subbing guys in and out, just like athletes everywhere. You're like, this team's good. Like, how are they a nine seed? Right? Like I remember that Florida state game was a breakthrough for me when I was a kid. I think that was 
maybe that was junior, senior high school. I was like, I didn't know Florida State was good. Like, I just hadn't watched them in the regular season. Like, I, I still was a sicko at that point, but I wasn't that much of a sicko that I watched every single team play in the tournament like I do now. Um, and I was like, how did I not know this team was good? And that made me, like, want to make sure I got my eyes on every team so that that didn't happen again. And I've done a pretty good job of that. Um, but point is, like, TCU is a team that their depth is a strength, right? Alabama having those big men, having a, ooh, Bobby, are you still here, Bobby? I have a point about Alabama St. Mary's that I forgot to bring up. Something I really like about Bama's chance against St. Mary's is because St. Mary's is so trash at shooting free throws, and Bama has so many bigs that can f- absorb fouls, right? Like you saw this when they played Purdue. They can just hack, you know, and send Saxon and Forbes to the line, like be aggressive defensively. Like they've got good size and length um, and, and, you know, extend that game. And I don't know. I guess that allows St. Mary's to set their defense. I just think that the fact that Bama has so many bigs and the St. Mary's can't shoot free throws is an interesting angle of that one and why I might uh, lean Bama, even though, in theory, St. Mary's could just absolutely blow up everything they want to do. Okay. I, I'm i betting South Carolina. Like the write-up's going to come out um, of just all the – I bet I play seven bets on Selection Sunday. This is the one that I, in hindsight, wish I held off on. Um. But it's still definitely my lean. I just think they're I think they're a better team. I think uh they're kind of the exception to that. Like they're 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 20 um 2022 Providence. They're very similar to 2022 Providence, and, and everyone and their mother at South Dakota State being Providence and then Iowa beating South Dakota State. And what happened? Providence beat South Dakota State, Richmond beat Iowa, and then Providence beat Richmond. Like shit happens. Like, and I just think this is the def- I think these are the just my two fake upsets. These are my two fake upsets. I could be totally wrong. They're just the upsets that make sense that I'm just anti. I just trust those two teams. But back to the where's my depth question guy. So, yeah, final answer is like, okay, UConn has great depth. That's a strength of their team. FAU has depth in bench scoring. That's a strength of their team. San Diego State has depth. Auburn has depth. But let's like, if Auburn's in, in, uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to articulate the point. I guess what I'm saying is you don't need depth to be successful, but depth can be a reason why you are successful. I'm going to repeat that. You don't de- need depth to be successful, but depth can be a reason why you are successful. So no, I so I think it's important. It can be important, but you don't necessarily need it. We've seen teams succeed without it. But it can but it's also been a reason why teams have gone on runs. Um so I don't know if that was helpful at all. That's just kind of how I see it. Um sleeper team to make the final four like New Mexico, man, like, sorry, like, that's just where I'm at. Like, it's the region. It's that they're hot. It's that I'm anti, I'm, I'm fading these two teams. And you're either playing a Nevada team that you've beaten twice already or an Arizona team that I think you match up decently well with. Um, New Mexico, so New Mexico is my answer. I think TCU is an extremely sneaky answer because if they can beat Purdue, you're not getting the scariest opponent here. Um, and then you're one game away against a Creighton or Tennessee, which would obviously be tough games. TCU is a sleeper. Another deep sleeper um, is freaking Drake or BYU. Those are just – Drake, BYU, and FAU are just teams that I love. And, like, guys, I've talked about this before. Sometimes you're going to have a little bit of bias. Like, I had bias at picking Colorado in front of Boise. I was like, I don't like Boise. They're dusty. Like, I don't like this dude with the tattoos that comes off the bench. I don't like the coach's son that chucks threes. I don't think this Dagan Hart guy is that good. That was just like me holding opinions and like I didn't really adjust those no matter what I saw. And so and I was and I was trying to be fair. But what happened tonight, guys? Max Rice came in and chucked. Dagan Hart didn't do anything. And Tattoo Man was fine. I was two of three. So point is sometimes I gotta trust my vibes. I really like Drake, tough region. I really like BYU. They could if they if they don't hit their threes one game, they're gonna they're gonna get cooked. But I kind of think they could hit threes every game because they run beautiful offense and they get good looks and these boys can shoot it. And then FAU, it's like another brutal draw. Like it, even if you get by UConn, like not an easy game next game, but a rematch with San Diego State in the Sweet 16 against a worse San Diego State team. Would... And then all of a sudden, maybe you're playing BYU. Like this could be the crazy region. Like UConn's the best team, guys. If you're picking them to win your bracket pool, you got to find a way to get unique somewhere else because 25% of people are going to have UConn. If you had to pick Tom, I don't like want to be like advertising this FAU thing. Like I definitely am going to look to cover bet FAU to cover. It's going to be really hard. UConn's just such a machine. Like, it's just hard to beat them. Like, I just – I don't know if you, UConn's going to lose. But if you're looking to get spicy, like, there's some fun teams in this region. There's some fun teams in this region. Um, okay, they definitely have a shot. Like, 
like they're they're three and a half point dogs as the eight seed there. Uh, I broke this down with Riley Davis of Heat Check on Sleepers Media. We did a whole video on this. Um, great Osabor is a really good player that TCU doesn't necessarily have a great matchup for, but I think as a team they can do a good enough job. Um, Uday's a little bigger than him. They've got other bodies to throw at him, and Darius Brown's a really good guard. I just I don't think Utah State's that talented. It's still kind of just Montana State plus, and uh, I think TCU is going to be able to get dribble penetration from their guards. They, they've been defending better, and when TCU is out running, um, like they're tough to stop. And uh, I just think this is where this is like the Mountain West. Like respect, like you've had an awesome year. Like I think Colorado State has a better chance at Texas than Utah State does at TCU. To be honest, um, back to St. Mary's and Bama. Gales are also awesome eliminating through point and stuff. Comment Bama. Yeah, dude, like St. Mary's could make Bama look stupid, absolutely. <laughs> that could totally happen. Like Bama could literally score like 60 points. Um, but yeah, yeah, the big man depth is a, is a legit thing with them. And like, you understand what I'm saying about like in that game, St. Mary's could control the glass, make Bama uncomfortable, make them play half court offense. But it's like, are we that confident St. Mary's can even hit 70 against this Bama offense? Like, are you this Bama defense? Like, like Marshall Onis is a really good decision maker as a point guard. Mahaney obviously has a high ceiling and can get hot. Dukas can get hot. Saxon's a wall and can crash the offensive glass. But, like, they got six guys. They got six guys. And, like, their discipline and their rebounding and their coach, I think, is enough to get by Grand Canyon. But... And it's definitely going to be enough against, against Bama. And, like, you never know. St. Mary's could beat Carolina, too. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if St. Mary's, like, made the Elite Eight. And then if this region could be blown wide open, you, you play a New Mexico team that you already beat in game one of the year. So, like, guys, that's what's beautiful about the tournament. It's what's beautiful about the tournament. St. Mary's could totally make the Final Four. Or you could be watching them against Grand Canyon. You're like, uh, Grand Canyon's got way more talent. They can't touch this town. Grant Foster guy is getting to the line. Like, um, what is it? Number thirty, the, the 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 stretch four on Grand Canyon. That's good. Uh, I'm missing. Gabe McLaughlin, right? Like he's hooping. And then uh, Ray Harrison and and Blackshear are playing. Are, are really good guards. Like Grand Canyon could totally beat them. It's just it's tough, man. Like that's why that's what's good about betting. If your brackets wrong, like you can you can find your edges. Like like right now, I'm thinking about this matchup that we might not get because it could be Grand Canyon, and then. Like, if St. Mary's makes a Sweet 16, I'd probably bet him against Carolina. Because I think Carolina's way worse in the half court. And I think Saxon's a perfect matchup for Baycott. But I can't put them here because I don't think they're going to – they might not win round one. So that's why, even though I am I promise you I'm fun and I like upsets, like, it's just hard to do stuff like this and have fun in your brackets sometimes because it's just, like, the opportunity cost. You know what I'm saying? So – I don't know. I still haven't even made my official bracket yet, which is crazy. Usually I have 12 brackets at this point, but this year I've just been so focused on catching up on the film of the teams that I didn't know as well and and just really looking into some matchups. Um, Illinois is unreal offensively. Like they, It's really vibes-based of Brad Underwood just kind of says, all right, dumbass, you booty ball. All right, Shannon, you get downhill. Coleman Hawkins can create so many problems as being a five-man popping out. Quincy Garrier is a really good player. Ty Rogers is an athletic freak. Uh, they play really well together. They, they hit 90 every game. They can get hot from three. Luke Goody comes off the bench. Dane Danger doesn't play that much. And then you see what he can do when he gets big minutes, like, like what he did in the Big Ten tournament. Um, they're hot. They just won the tournament. Big Ten tournament champions seem to falter. Like, I don't know if that's a BS pattern, but, like, it's kind of hard to get out of our heads, right? Um, and I don't think, like, in the open court, could could does BYU have an answer for Terrence Shannon? Of course they don't. No one does. And BYU damn doesn't. But, like, if Illinois missed a couple shots to start the game and BYU is running their shit and you know, Illinois is not guarding, like BYU could be up 10 for tech. And do they hold on? That's another question. But like, I think Illinois got a tough draw because you get a really good offensive team and then you get the best defensive team right after. And then if you get through that, you have UConn. So I think in Illinois title future, like imagine Illinois was here or here or here. I think they're a legit Final Four team. I think they got a really bad draw. So that that's my thoughts on Illinois. All right, chat's slowing down a bit. There's still a ton of you here somehow. You guys are awesome. Like and subscribe reminder. Can I get some more activity in the chat? 
someone asked me a question. What do you say, guys? What do you say? The boys are tired, Charlie. I know. I'm tired. Josh, what up? How are we doing, man? Give it to me three times. I appreciate it. Um, Nebraska right now. I didn't answer this earlier. Okay. Another weird matchup. Nebraska. Nebraska. I've been leading Nebraska all week. Uh, I'm can't, I can't get out of my head last year that A&M got cooked by Penn State. And Andrew Funk hit 8 of 10 threes. And I'm kind of getting flashbacks again. Like, okay, a Big Ten team that can rebound is going to – I mean, Nebraska's not great at rebounding. I mean, with AM, what do they do? I honestly hate watching them play basketball. What do they do? It's Radford, Wade Taylor, and now Obasekiu's emerged, right, are put in positions at the top of the key with the floor spaced to make a play off the bounce. Sometimes it's Wade taking a tough three or it's Tyrese just getting downhill and making a play. Or it's Obaseki getting downhill and making a play, and then everybody crashed in the offensive glass, and it works. I hate it. It can be gross sometimes, but it works. So you better defensive rebound if you want to beat them. Defensively, they're like frantic and they've got energy. So like it seems like there's this facade that they're a good defensive team, but they're 56th in Kempom defense. Um, their biggest strength of the team is the offensive rebounding, and it's not even close. Um, they take decent care of the ball, and you know why? It's because they end – this is an interesting thing. You guys remember the Wisconsin – um, the Wisconsin Johnny Davis team that, like, wasn't good but kept winning every game? A key thing about that team was they didn't turn the ball over. So the end of the shot clock was Johnny Davis go take a tough shot, and he did a pretty good job at scoring that. So Texas A&M takes pretty good care of the ball, but it's because they take a lot of hard shots, right? It's There's late shot clock situations where it's just go make something happen. And those are really good athletic guards that are, that are hard to keep in front and, like, Nebraska, like, earlier in the season, like, it's been a team that I haven't watched as much as I would have liked to just because I didn't watch the Big Ten as much because just I didn't think the league was that good. But, like, Nebraska's been the number three defense in the country since February, which is crazy to me. Um, they take they can take de- decently tough shots. They can get hot from three. We saw that, obviously, when they beat Purdue. Um, I just don't know. It's like if Nebraska isn't hot from three, like if Mass and Tominaga aren't hitting threes, like – I could see A and M overwhelming them on the glass. It's a, it's just a, a gross. It's a gross game. It's it's a true coin flip to me. I'm not betting it in my bracket. Like, I think I lead Nebraska. Um, I just don't love it. And do I think either team can beat Houston? Man, A and M crashed the offensive glass against Houston's defense. They already played this year, didn't they? And Houston was up huge, and then A and M stormed back because uh, Wade Taylor went nuts. So Houston was up in that game, 38 to 23 at half. Okay, and then AM outscored him forty three to thirty two in the second half. I'm pretty sure they tied it up and took the lead at one point. Wade Taylor had thirty four. Like, don't okay. As as much as people want Tomiaga to be like the the, the March Madness hero, like we can't forget that Wade Taylor is the best player on the floor, not him. Um, interesting question. In theory, Michigan State. Um, I guess Michigan State. Like they're both supposed to be tough, defensive minded teams that I guess could give Carolina problems. And Michigan State, it's got more guys who can shoot the three, I guess. I'm just having a tough time getting around Michigan State. I think Carolina just lucked out, honestly. Like like I said, I do think St. Mary's could give them a game. And Mississippi State and Michigan State, like, tough defensively, like, older teams. I don't know. I definitely think if I'm Carolina, I'd rather see Mississippi State, though. My final four, like, in my first bracket, I had UConn, Marquette, Creighton, Carolina, and I don't even like that. I kind of want to throw New Mexico in there, but I know it's not – it's not smart. Um, I guess I'll say that, UConn, Marquette, Creighton, Carolina. But part of me wants to have the Caleb Love revenge. I don't know. And I'm not supposed to be this – I'm not trying to be like a Big East stan. I just really like Marquette's path. I think they cause a lot of problems for Kentucky, and I think a Houston, not a full strength, that Marquette can – do can. Uh, handle their defensive pressure well. I do like Marquette a lot. Okay, Izzo's finally starting to play Booker a little bit. And, like, sure, it's not Cooper and Kohler at the same time, but we still see way too much Cooler, Cooper, and Soko. And there's so many pointless ball screens set by Michigan State. It's ball screen set, run around, try to make something happen, swing it, another guard takes it. And, like, 
they've been playing a little bit better. I'm just like, I've given them the benefit of the doubt so many times. And it's like, if they don't, if they don't beat Baylor, if they don't crush Baylor on a neutral, like, are they even in the tournament? And that was like basically a home game too. Does Cole injury scare me at all? Like, um, No, because of how conservative they were with him, right? Like, you look at what Kansas happened with McCullough. It's like, tried to give him a go and stuff. Like, Marquette sat him for the whole Big East tournament, right? It's oblique. It's not like a knee. It seems like it's a little bit of a pain tolerance thing, and it's probably much better that he sat out. I'm not a – hashtag not a doctor. It scares me a little bit, of course, but that's why I'm not saying, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not laying all these numbers. Like, I'll probably bet Marquette if they play Kentucky, but it's like, I'm not, like, betting Marquette. Now, at the end of the day, the bracket pool is my pool I'm running. Details are up in the chat if you want to join. It's a $10 buy-in. Like, it's not that serious. It's it's a dice roll at the end of the day. So, like, I think Marquette's a good value. I'm not going to be heartbroken if they lose. I'm not throwing a huge bet on the win at all. So, yeah, of course, it's something to take into account. But I, I think that they've handled it well. And I I don't know. It's a little bit of blind faith. But I, I just believe. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's a stupid answer, I guess. But. No. Final answer, no. No, it scares me a tiny bit, but it doesn't legit scare me, obviously, or else I wouldn't do that. BYU, Drake, New Mexico, TCU. Ooh, this is the the, the Oge Hoops parlay, essentially. Um, throw in a... I don't know. It depends if you're talking money lines or, or spreads. I don't know, Josh, but uh, I like I like where your head's at so far. Um, Riley, in a potential Sweet 16 matchup, how would you feel about Duke and Houston? My guy, J-Man, I don't know if he's here. Probably not. J-Man is a, is a Duke fan that – more than a Duke fan. This dude really knows basketball, and he has a YouTube channel and breaks down some Duke stuff. And, and he made a video just explaining how Duke is soft. And, like, a lot of it kind of boils down to, of like, what was what was dangerous about Duke when they heated up last year? Filipowski's the four and Derek Lively's the five. That just makes them scarier defensively, right? Derek Lively was an insane rim protector. They don't have that same rim protection. Filipowski uh, – I think is more of a problem in college as a four man. Um, and I mean, Duke's just been kind of fraudulent. Like you, you didn't beat Carolina either time. Uh, you know, I was at the game when, when wake beat them and, you know, McCain's impressive when Proctor and Roach and those guys are in rhythm, like they are good, but uh, the, the Duke talent just isn't at the level that it is. It's still Shire out there. We saw what Tennessee did kind of bullying them. And I think Houston can do the same thing. I think Wisconsin would beat Duke too, to be honest, if they beat James Madison. I mean, it sounds good to me, but what's the number? That's what I want to know. Fancy K, I lean Creighton. I thought about this one for a while. Uh, I lean Creighton because my hesitation with Tennessee is it's like, great. Now you have a guy that can create instant offense, right? That you didn't have before, but they don't have the, the luxury that they've had in past years of, always having a serviceable energy big off the bench. Like, I understand Awaka is there, but Awaka and I do aren't that big. And I think Cal is going to get his. I think Shireman can do a solid enough job on connect. And I think uh, the way that they guard ball screens can make uh, Ziegler and Vescovy have to kind of make plays off the bounce. And, like, that's where you live with Tennessee, right? Um, and, and Shireman, he's not – I love Baylor Shireman. He's one of my favorite players in the country. And the way I've seen him guard some some guys in the Big East, like I just have confidence in him that he can do a decent job on connect. And Tennessee is good defensively, of course, but like I said, I like the Calipari matchup, and um, I don't know, Creighton's just less reliant on one guy. Like they just have multiple guys that can create, and Alexander Shireman and Ashworth, and those guys aren't even arguably Calipari is their best uh, offensive player in terms of like. He could be your best offensive option. He could be your most efficient offensive option. So uh, I think Creighton just has a little bit more balance, and uh, I would lean Creighton in that potential matchup. Yeah, Duke beating Houston would be a shock, like, even with Houston undermanned. Because undermanned Houston, if they get by AM or Nebraska, it means that they're fine, right? If if all if they play a really tight game against AM and Nebraska, maybe you're a little bit more scared. Uh, so we'll see there. Um. Oh, wait, sorry, I missed this stat, Bobby. Uh, they're one of four teams. I feel like giving more points than they score. Yeah, not great company. And like the Q4 losses are there, right? And it, what it shows you is that they, they have a volatile style they're, because it's so crazy. And I use the word drunk, right? It's just drunk. It's just like, it's just frantic. It's just different. It's unique. I give them credit for that. 
Anderson Garcia leading the nation in offensive rebounding is just nuts considering his size. Like he's got more than ED per game. It's crazy. Like it's not a fluke. They are so good at it. They're so committed to it. Um, and it can cause problems for teams. And like I could see them owning the glass against Nebraska and for and Nebraska doesn't shoot well and they win that game. Um, but I just don't know. I just, it's hard to trust their style. But weirder things have happened. We saw them get hot in the SEC tournament, uh, you know, last year, which or this is two years ago when they didn't make the tournament. But uh, I feel like everyone's taking BYU Illinois win over Iowa State. Iowa State this is just, I agree. Iowa State has the best shot against UConn, but um, I wrote this one my in my hashtag will play pick of the month when I had Iowa State against Houston um, about what I liked about. It's kind of the same thing of how you want to beat Iowa State the same way you want to beat Houston. Like against Iowa State, it's like you got to really outscore them, like what BYU did at home, or you got to really gross them up, like what Kansas State did at home, right? And BYU and Illinois obviously fall in the category of outscoring. And I just think if BYU got a third crack at them with after just beating Illinois, like I would just feel really confident in BYU. It, Iowa State could totally lock up both those teams. Though. Like we know what Iowa State is. I I rode them in the Big Twelve tournament, but when it comes to the NCAA tournament, it's just hard to trust a team that's built on defense to this extent. Like without pros, like the Virginia team that won it all, you had Ty Jerome and DeAndre Hunter and Kyle Guy. Like the offensive star power, like just doesn't feel high enough. Like I haven't legitimately considered Iowa State as, as a national title pick. Maybe they'll make me look stupid. I I've loved this team. They made me some money, but uh. I do think definitely that one of these teams can give them a scare. And if they do get through, I agree they probably have a better chance at UConn, but I still think UConn is good enough offensively that they could handle uh, the defense of Iowa State. Um, well, we know for a fact they match up well with Iowa State. And then, like I said, uh, with Illinois, um, they have every shot in the world to uh, outscore them and win 95-84. Like we've seen these Illinois scores. Um, think Auburn's legit contender to win a dial. I, I told you my my hate, uh, not my hate, just my 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 thing that I think San Diego State beats Auburn. Um, so no, I don't think Auburn's legit contender to win at all because Janai Bruins are only really good player. Jalen Williams is is a second pretty good player, but I just don't believe in their talent enough. Like I just think they get by on being really well coached on overwhelming people with ball pressure and getting out in transition. I think you play a team like San Diego State, you play a team like UConn that can dictate pace, that has more talent, that you beat them. Um so no, I don't think Auburn. I don't think Auburn makes the lead eight. I'll be very surprised if Auburn makes the lead eight. Of course, the exception would be is if FAU beats UConn, they get by San Diego State. I would take Auburn over FAU. Um, all right, it's getting real late, guys. The stream was awesome, awesome Colorado game. I'm gonna real quick just fill out this bracket, like just kind of based on the conversations we've had, and this is probably what I'm gonna end up submitting to at least one bracket pool. Um, scroll up if you want to join my bracket pool. Make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, I'll answer a couple more questions as I'm as I'm filling this bracket out. So, uh, fire away. What game is this talking about? Twenty three M head. Ooh, should I just do McNeese and have some fun? Why not? Let's do it. Or should I do Arizona to mix it up? I'm falling for it. All right, here we go. All right, there it is, guys. I think this is what I'm going to roll with. Like I said, I've got futures everywhere. I... Let me let me read you guys my futures portfolio. I got um guys, I have some really embarrassing futures, including some teams that didn't make the tournament. And okay, real I'll do Bobby's question. Um, if you were to rank the teams in the West just by vibes and eye test, who would your top four be? Um Arizona number one, North Carolina number two. Y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but New Mexico, number three, and St. Mary's, number four. Like, I just don't believe in Baylor, Bobby. Like, I think there's no shot Baylor makes around this tournament, especially with Langston Love out the first two rounds. I just, they don't have enough, they just, I just don't think the guards, think about it, Bobby. It's like, you went from having 
the Davion Mitchell, Jared Butler, Master Teague backcourt. Okay, before that, you had Makai Mason in there, right? Remember, they hit a bunch of, uh, I think it was against Syracuse, hit a bunch of shots uh, in that they were an eight seed. The next year was the COVID year. They were nasty. They had Mark Vital, they had Flo Tom, but they had these great energy bigs. They had Matt Meyer coming off the bench. Next year, you've got, they win the title. Obviously, that team was amazing. I don't need to say anything else. What happens the year after you win the title? You bring in James Akinjo. You still got Matt Meyer coming off the bench. You got LJ Cryer now, and you got Flagler. What happens the year after? You got Flagler, you got Cryer, and you bring in Keontae George, who is hooping right now in the NBA, averaging 25 and 7 assists over the past like two weeks. Like Keontae George has been hooping. Jacoby Walter's not that nice. He's okay. He's a, he's, a, he's he's obviously talented. He's not Keontae George nice. Ray J. Dennis is good, but he doesn't defend at the level as those other guys. And it's not as balanced. Like he's got the, I feel like he's got the ball a little too much. And then Jaden Nunn is fine. He's been playing better. I'm just not really feeling it as much. And then Langston Love's been banged up. Like I just don't think this backcourt is Baylor's had elite guards four straight years. It's not, it's not elite backcourt. It's not. It's just not at that level. And what makes up for it, the reason they still came in third in the Big 12 is because Jalen Bridges is good and because Misi's good. Okay. But I don't think it, I don't think that balances out how much worse their backcourt is. And I understand that Ken Palm says they're an amazing three-point shooter team. I've said this a bunch of times, though. Those numbers are based off of the fact that they were really hot in non-con against bad teams. Once in, once they're in the Big 12, they were like fifth in Big 12 playing three-point percentage. So I'm out on Baylor. Clemson could get hot because they're old and they've got good bigs if the guards are playing well, whatever. But, like, I don't trust him. I don't trust Brunel. Too many times I've watched Clemson and they don't get the ball to their bigs. They don't play defense. Gerard and Chase Hunter get absolutely walked. Like, they're going to get wet, but locked. Like, they're going to get walked by New Mexico. Lock in the Lobos if you haven't. And I don't trust him. Bama, of course, has such a high ceiling. But they're just not in rhythm right now. I don't know how confident they are. I think they cook Charleston. I think they could give St. Mary's problems. But hard to really have any confidence in them. Is Nevada the sneaky team that makes a run? Like, it's a crazy reason. Or are we going to look stupid? And Ken Palm was right all along. And Michigan State goes on a run. And Michigan State makes the Final Four, like, like, yeah, man, it's like, it's like, I don't want to, it doesn't feel like baseless hype. Like there's so many reasons to love New Mexico. There's so many reasons to love New Mexico. You've got multiple guards that can create. You've got three guards that can create. You've got shooters off the bench in Baker and Amzil. You've got an NBA, an NBA first rounder, in my opinion, in Toppin. I think Toppin is an NBA player. Junior Joseph is a big, strong, big rebounds. You've got Patino, a coach who's, who's who's been around, had some good teams in Minnesota. They, they, they beat an ACC, game, ACC team last time he was in the tournament. Minnesota beat Louisville in 2018. Um, the group's connected. Like, they've got some depth. Uh, they, who's the freshman? Is it Washington? The other player, he's really good. Um, they can get hot from three, even though the three-point percentage isn't great. Um, they take care of the ball. They force turnovers. Jalen House is going to be up in Gerard's Girl. It's going to be beautiful. I think they're going to – if they have success against Clemson and get there, I think they're going to beat Baylor as well. Um I'm all about the Lobos. Like it's, I'm all about the Lobos. They're red hot. They're 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 red hot, and uh, I think they're an, uh, the the premier double digit seed that has the best chance to make a run. Um, so hell yeah. Um, Cougs Dukes not too concerned. Otherwise, stylistically of I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about James Madison, Houston, huh? Tomorrow. I haven't finished my write-ups. I'm going to release my Thursday reps tomorrow. I think I'm playing more games Friday, though. Uh, so they'll they'll get out. They'll get out. Everything's free this year. Um, I might I might try to find a way to to sell some stuff next year. I, uh, but for now, I'm just doing this for fun, and I'm giving everything out. And if I stay hot, hopefully I can just grow my account, and we'll go from there. So once again, appreciate all your guys' support. This was a lot of fun. Uh, enjoy the Madness tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, – yeah, I guess this is my official bracket. I gotta, I gotta put it on Twitter. Um, not without some trials and tribulations to fill this out. I know it's a little bit chalk. Usually, I like to have a little bit more fun than this, but you gotta lean into the game theory. And uh, I'll be betting upsets on the side as well. So, thanks again for coming. Unreal numbers on the stream. I'm, I'm so grateful for you all. And uh, this is a lot of fun. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Or sign off. Say, say bye to me in the chat. Say, say good night to me. Say sweet dreams to me in the chat. Someone, please. Or else I'm not going to have good dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Twins fan. I appreciate you. You've been day one with me and Turnstone, me and Nick. Anyone else want to say Anyone else want to say something nice for you? If there's 33 of you here, do you all fall asleep? Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you. I really just ranted for 90 minutes. 
y'all fire chat though um yoshi welcome to the fan bro appreciate you fancy k hell yeah all right grateful for you guys i'm signing off peace